Well, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Ray Kolbacher. I'm the senior pastor here at Parkview, and um, on behalf of the Leone family, as well as our entire church family, I want to thank you for being here today as we take time to give thanks for and celebrate Lauren's life. And here's the deal. Uh, I can say celebrate because, as many of you know, Lauren was a follower of Jesus. And Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live even though they die. Do you believe this? That was a serious question for people in Jesus' day. It's a serious question for all of us. And it was a serious question for Lauren, and her answer was a resounding yes. She believed. See, more than knowing that God is with us today, we all need hope that God has something for us someday. And Christianity provides that hope, hope of resurrection beyond the grave. Because of Jesus' resurrection from death, as believers, our resurrection is assured. And then along with that, we realize that um, heaven isn't just the absence of suffering, it is also the presence of something, and that something is life. Which is why in these moments of loss as Christians, we do not grieve as the rest of humanity who has no hope. We know that Lauren had faith in Jesus, who is the resurrection and the life, and that is why we know right now she enjoys life eternal and the presence of her God, a life more real, more full, more healthy and whole than we, uh, we in our finite humanness can ever imagine. And so today, together we can honestly celebrate both the life Lauren lived with us and the life she now shares with Jesus. So welcome to the celebration, and thanks for joining us. Let us pray. Oh, great and mighty God, you are our redeemer and our creator and our sustainer. And God, we thank you so much for your creation, Lauren Leone. God, we thank you that when we look at her life, we can indeed say that she lived. We can say, God, that she was a child of yours who was redeemed. But, God, we call on you today in the midst of celebrating her life, asking that you would also sustain us, that you would comfort us in our time of need, that as we gather today, as we laugh, as we cry, as we join together, that you would be our great sustainer. Lord, we pray that today you would open our eyes to see you at work. And as you do that, that you would open our hearts also to receive what you have to say to us. Quite simply, God, as we look at her life, may we be changed and transformed in some way for your glory. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. From the moment that I walked into the ER 12 days ago, I can say that I have had the opportunity time and time again to see God at work. In the 20th century, there was a book called In Their Eyes Were Watching God, and the author, Zora Neale Hurston, there's this moment where this group of people are really struggling, and they find themselves in a shanty. And while huddled together in the shanty, a storm hits. The lights flicker and the lights go out. And it's at this moment in the book as they sit powerless, staring into the blackness, looking at the unknown that she writes, and their eyes were watching God. And I can tell you again and again, from that night that we were in the ER and we prayed for a chance, that our eyes were opened and we watched God answer with a chance. When we prayed for that, we watched as God allowed the best neurosurgeon that the hospital had was there on call. Our eyes got to see God answer our prayers. And as we sat holding hands, praying, reminiscing, concerned, and a nurse 
a good friend of Chris and Joe's came out of the OR and she was one of the nurses that was in there that night. And she said, I can assure you that we have our best team at work. Our eyes were watching God. As you know, Lauren absolutely loved theater. And it's amazing that from a hospital bed, over 16,000 people around the world heard her story. 6,000 people committed to praying and interceding for her. From a hospital bed, she stood on center stage. Weeks before, there had been a challenge, and it was the challenge to take themselves off the focus for those people that were in her theater group with Spotlight and to put the focus on God. And the challenge of that was to take any pictures they had of themselves off their Facebook profile picture. And so when that happened, when that call was made, when that challenge was made, Lauren decided that she was gonna step to the challenge. So she took her picture down, she pointed to Christ, and what she posted was the scripture that we're gonna share with you now. Second Corinthians 12, nine. My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses so that Christ's power may rest on me. Would you stand with us as we sing together? Oh, God. And all will see how great 
be seated. Good afternoon. I'd like to start by thanking all the fire service personnel for coming today and for your support, your prayers for Lauren and the Leone family. I'm sure many of the civilians here are wondering why all the firefighters are here. Lauren's father is Deputy Chief Joe Leone of the Addison Fire District. Chief Leone, like all the other fire service personnel here today, is part of a bigger fire service family, family that stretches across the whole world. We are joined into this family through the many things we commonly do. It's not uncommon for a firefighter to spend a third of his life working with his fellow firefighters. And it's not uncommon for when they're not out on calls, which they're routinely on, fighting fires, helping those that are injured, helping those that are sick. Those things have their inherent challenges as well as rewards. But when not together, we come together as a family, a fire service family. These friendships that come together naturally includes all the firefighters' families. Lauren, Katie, Alex, Nick, <laughs> have all been born while well, Chief Leone has been a member of the Addison Fire District. So along with their mother, Chris, they're all part of our family. The entire family is very close to the Addison Fire District. With me are three of our members here to share their thoughts about Lauren and the Leone family. Got to put it down a little bit. Thank you, Chief. Oh, excuse me one second. Joe, Chris, L for Leone, L for Leone, not B for baloney. You'd figure, though, uh, with how high the Leone stature is, they at least have a step stool for me to be up here, but I guess not. <laughs> Thank you. <sighs> We'd like to begin by saying it's an honor and privilege to speak before you today. Um, I will admit it's very intimidating to speak in front of a large group like this. It's much easier to run into burning buildings and get people out of smashed cars. The three of us have been adopted into the Leone family. The list of things that we have done together, vacations, vacations to Disney, graduations, birthday parties, holidays, dinners, and of course, CYT plays. <laughs> if you name it, I am confident we done it, have done it. <clears throat> the most, part, most important part of this relationship has been our kids. Now, we've added a few since our first trip, <clears throat> but it, only is, it has only strengthened our relationships. Whether it's been days, weeks, months since we've seen, seen each other, when we got back together, it's like we've never been apart. In this giant family, we are all, the kids are all brothers, sisters, daughters, and sons, <clears throat> no matter what their last name was. <clears throat> So much so, Joe has drafted some nicknames for some of the kids. My son, Bo, is called Meatball. My other son, Calvin, is called Crazy. <clears throat> and of course, Chris has always, always graciously volunteered Katie and Lauren um, when we were out to take, have the girls take Genevieve to the bathroom so Amy didn't have to. So thank you, too. But this speech is not about stories or storytelling. 
The speech is not about remembering this or remembering that. I get to raise the microphone up a little. <laughs> Joe, Joe and Chris, thank you for uh, this tremendous honor to speak uh, today and to present uh, to this audience. Uh, to dovetail off of what uh, Brock was telling you is that this speech is a reflection of who Lauren is. As we look at the impact that Lauren has had and how can we explain or describe it to any of you, how do we provide you the inspiration from this celebration? How, do, how can we get you to walk out of here better than you walked in? There have been stories, there have been scriptures, there have been songs today. So what do we, Lauren's fire service family, do for all of you. As we scrolled through Facebook and looked at the outpouring of support for Lauren and her family, there was a common theme, pictures. People would post pictures of Lauren doing this and that, here and there, and you can see her living her life and doing the things that she wanted to do and going to the places that she wanted to go. Some of those times we've learned at Joe and Chris's expense. Her pictures are filled with different people, her family and her friends, and these pictures show the transition of a young girl to a beautiful young lady. Her pictures describe the impact that she has had on all of our lives. We're pleased today to share with you some of the pictures on the screens above that Lauren has impacted with our families and lives. So now we ask all of you to think about some things. We ask you who are in your pictures, where are your pictures taken, and what are you doing in, in your pictures? As you can see in those pictures, um, Lauren is the inspiration for you to go out and live your life because we know that's how short it can be. Lauren provides inspiration to do things that you've not done, go to places you haven't been. Lauren is the inspiration for you to meet new people or connect with old friends. Lauren is the inspiration to try something new or work harder at things that you love. Lauren is the inspiration to live life to the fullest and not letting it pass you by. Lauren is our inspiration to believe in God, no matter what faith you follow. Lauren is the inspiration that prayer works. Lauren is the inspiration to be thankful for today. And if we are here tomorrow, let's make tomorrow the better than today. While her life has been cut short, and we all grieve and mourn at the loss, we should be inspired by all the things that she has shown us. So we close with this again. Who are in your pictures? Where were your pictures taken? And what are you doing in these pictures? And the last thing I want to talk about is, is our uniform. Um, as you see all the firefighters standing around us, we all wear Class A dress blue uniforms. And we kind of went against the rules. On Facebook, the invitation said, wear something that Lauren would have picked out for you. <laughs> I don't think she would have picked out this Class A. And yet again, we do not have pink Class A uniforms. <laughs> so we all decided to add a little flair to our uniforms, and that's why we have our ties. No. <laughs> Hi, we were all part of Lauren's life group. Um, we had the honor to have the Leone girls in our small group this year, and most of us also have had the privilege to be able to grow up with Lauren. As we tried to come up with our favorite memories, we were flooded with precious moments and our favorite things about her. Even though Lauren and Katie are twins, they are their own unique person. Lauren was fierce and sassy, smelled like a walking bath and body works, <laughs> and had an amazing fashion sense that we all envied. She had open arms for us and had a great way of getting right down to girl talk. She was not afraid to speak her mind, especially coming to making the right fashion choice. Each week after we talked about the drama and humor in our lives, we talked about the way that God had challenged us and intervened in our daily activities. As an example of the peculiar way that God works, a few weeks before her passing, our group was becoming closer than ever before. We would snuggle up on Allison's couch and talk about what Christ has revealed to us that week. During our last discussion, we talked about heaven and our relationship with God. The questions that Lauren had about our eternal home stood out. 
She had a curiosity that, looking back, is only a sign of his timing. One of her last journal entries had talked about how she desired to become closer with God. Now she is closer than ever. It was a blessing to have this time and an honor to be able to spend it with such a precious and unique person. Lauren's last Facebook post was 2 Corinthians 12, 9. But he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses, so that Christ's power may rest on me. This is a verse that we will hold close as we continue to wrestle with why this has happened. But in what we don't understand, God is big and enough for us. God is mysterious in his ways, and sometimes we don't understand him. We never could have prepared ourselves for losing such an amazing person. We always looked forward to being with her, and her attitude always lifted our spirits. But what I think we have all learned from this experience is how precious life is. We have learned how to never take a moment for granted and that God is always present in our lives. He has a plan for us that no one on this earth will ever be able to comprehend or understand. And Lauren's unity with our Savior is unfathomable. We know that in this tragedy and in our suffering, God has a bigger plan for Lauren and all of us. Her questions about heaven were answered, and we have yet to know what he has in store for us, but we are positive that it is something great. So I look at all the people that are uh, packed into this building here this afternoon to celebrate Lauren's life. I can't help but thinking how ironic it is that we're probably breaking a lot of fire codes. <laughs> My name is Glenn. I'm on staff here at Parkview, and I also have the privilege of serving as the Addison Fires uh, chaplain, and I'm privileged to call the Leone's friends, and to have been one of the many, many people who have walked with this dear family through the valley these last 12 days. As I would leave the hospital at the end of the day to drive home, I would reflect on um, what I had witnessed each day at the hospital as I saw so many people come um, to support the Leone family and to pray for Lauren. And as I, was, as I would drive home, I couldn't find the right words to, to describe what I had been a witness to. A few days ago, though, my wife... Um, texted Joe and Chris, and one of the things that she said in the text was how she felt when she was with them in the hospital, and she said that she felt like she was on holy ground, and when I read my wife's text, I'm like, that's it, that's what I was trying to put my, my finger on, that, those are the words that I was trying to, um, to, to articulate. There was something incredibly powerful going on in and around Lauren's room that was just hard to describe in words. And as I've been reflecting on the days uh, since Lauren was taken to the hospital, I would just like to do my very best with the few minutes that I have to explain why I felt like I was treading on holy ground. While I was privileged to be with the Leones, I saw God hold this family and undergird them with strength. And in this valley, these last 12 days, I've seen God's presence. The Bible says that God is our refuge and he's our strength. He's an ever-present help in times of trouble. That is why we're not afraid even when the earth quakes or the mountains topple into the sea. Elsewhere in Scripture, the writer of Hebrews says that God says, never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. And in Proverbs, he is called a friend who sticks closer than a brother. If ever there was a time when God's ever-present help was needed, it's been the last couple of weeks. If ever there was a time when we need to be reminded that God will not forsake or leave his children, that he will stick closer than a brother, 
It's today and in the days to come. Now, I've read these verses over and over again through the years. But my time with the Leones in the hospital, I actually saw them lived out before my very eyes. I saw God's ever-present help demonstrated through the many family and friends who would stop by just to be present, just to be there. They'd bring food. They would bring dessert. They would bring things to drink. They would bring games to play. They would bring notes of encouragement. I saw God being like a friend who sticks closer than a brother in the many people who were, who were there and sat and listened as the Leones needed to talk to someone as they needed to share their hopes for the future, their fears for the present, their sorrow, their gratitude. Obviously, in times like this, there are so many thoughts and so many doubts and questions and emotions that threaten to overwhelm us. And God provided many friends to be there to serve as a safe place for the family to share whatever it was that they were dealing with inside at the moment. God had been present through the tireless work of the medical staff and the specialists who worked so hard to sustain Lauren's life. One of whom I thought was odd was the hospital chaplain who one day came into Lauren's room and just broke down in tears. And then poor Joe and Chris are consulting them and they're putting their arm around him. <laughs> and as a chaplain, I'm like, note to self, that's probably not a good thing to do. In this valley, I've, I've seen God grant his peace as well. The Leones are funny. You guys know that. If you know them for any amount of time, they're funny. They have an awesome sense of humor. And the, even in the valley that they have been in, they haven't lost their ability to laugh. I'm actually amazed at how much laughter there has been as memories have been shared. And I knew Joe was going to be okay the day he told me, you know, Glenn, I, f I thought I should send one of your pastors home because he was afraid that, that she was on overtime. <laughs> you know, we don't have overtime here, Joe, right? <laughs> it's hard to laugh if the heart has no peace. And some people use laughter as a defense mechanism, but their laughter was different. Their laughter came as a result of the peace that God is providing for them even in the darkest of times. Joe texted me Wednesday night and his text blew me away. He said, and I quote, we're so blessed, Glenn. And after reading that text, I thought of what Jesus told his closest friends the night before he was arrested and tried and crucified. Jesus knew his friends would be confused and distraught due to his impending arrest and crucifixion. And this is what he said to them. He said, peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I don't give to you as the world gives. So don't let your hearts be troubled. And don't be afraid. I realize that Joe could say they're blessed, even in the midst of heartache, because God is pouring his peace out on this dear family. I saw God's peace on display when Joe and Chris would hold each other's hand, look each other in the eye and say, no matter what happens, we're going to be okay. I saw God's peace on display when Joe and Chris would look their kids in the eye and tell them, no matter what, we're going to make it through. Our family's going to be okay. Being present to witness stuff like that causes me to feel like I was standing on holy ground. Over the last 12 days, I've also seen God's kindness. I witnessed God's kindness in allowing Lauren to survive the surgery to relieve the pressure on her brain, something that so many were praying for. The medical team that worked in a tireless and professional ma manner allowed the Leones more time to process what happened and to gather around Lauren to talk and to pray just be with her. I see God's kindness displayed in the lives of eight families whose loved ones have been saved or vastly improved because they were recipients of vital organs donated by Lauren. The other day, said, Chris said, we've been praying for our new eight family members who have a little bit of Lauren with them now. It's such a blessing, she said. 
And knowing how happy those families are helps us. Joe would describe it as, you know, what was our worst day was the best day for those organ recipients and their families. God displayed his kindness on the very night that Lauren had her aneurysm. About an hour or so before it happened, Lauren, Katie, Joe, and Chris were having dinner together before the girls' voice lessons. Lauren happened to have been applying for a summer job at a Christian camp. And as part of the application, she had to share her faith journey. So as they ate, Lauren articulated her faith journey for Joe and Chris to hear. She shared about how and when she put her faith in Jesus Christ for her salvation. This was very kind because it was a very clear and vivid reassurance that that Lauren knew Christ and is now with him in heaven. Lauren has been totally fine since the moment she passed. As Ray said earlier, she is completely healed and is perhaps using that voice of hers to sing God's praises even now. But it wasn't Lauren's good works or church attendance that earned her way into heaven. The Bible says that we have all sinned and fall short of God's glory. And as great as Lauren was, she wasn't perfect, and neither are you or me. We've all fallen short of God's glory. We've been separated from God because of our our very nature is contrary to God's nature. We're selfish. He's selfless. We'll lie to protect ourselves. He's truth. We're prone to hate our enemies. He loves them. The Bible says that the wages of our sin is death. So being imperfect people, we find ourselves in a pretty nasty predicament, really. We're not morally perfect creatures, and our moral imperfections deserve death, the Bible says, eternal separation from God. And if that were the end of the story, we'd all be without hope here. But the Bible says that though the wages for our sin is death, the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Though we can't be good enough to earn right standing before a holy God, God did something about it. He sent Christ, his only son, who lived the perfect life we never could to pay the ultimate price for our sins, death on a cross. The Bible says God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. The apostle Paul wrote, because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ, even when we were dead in our sins. It is by grace you have been saved. And God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus, in order that in the coming ages he might show the incomparable riches of his grace, expressed in his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. For it is by grace that we have been saved, through faith. And this is not from ourselves. It's the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. This is what Lauren believed. She was saved from the penalty of sin through her faith in Christ. He paid for her sin on the cross. It was his death, his burial, and his resurrection that bought her right standing in God's eyes and assured her eternal life. Death couldn't keep Christ in the tomb, and it won't keep Lauren there either. She's now more alive than any of us, welcomed into heaven by Christ himself. To sum this good news up, I'd like to read one more verse for you. It's from John chapter 3, verse 16, and it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. We can celebrate Lauren's life today because she lived it to the full and because she's now enjoying the eternal life provided for her by Christ. Let's pray. Father, it is um, humbling and awe-inspiring 
to gather like this to celebrate Lauren's life. And so, Lord, I just pray that you would continue to uphold the Leone family, to give them strength, give them endurance, give them hope. Continue to draw their eyes towards you. I pray that the um, memory that they've had with Lauren would, would fill their hearts with joy. Thank you, God, that the Leone family does not live with regrets because every day Lauren knew that she was loved. We're grateful for your love for us, Lord God. We pray these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. You're calling me over. You're pulling me close. With love you surround me. You give me hope. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're taking me deeper. You're making me whole. With grace you redeem me. Yeah. You restore my soul. Now I'm made new. Because.
you who you always said you would be with a sinking feeling in your chest always waiting on someone else to fix you tell me when do you forget it's your life what you gonna Yeah.
We're invited to uh, stand again one more time as we um, sing to our Jesus. Go ahead and stand on your feet. And we're going to clap our hands and we're going to sing and shout for the joy of the Lord is our strength. Go clap your hands. See, I'm trading. And I'm trading my sorrows. And I'm trading my shame. And I'm laying them down for the joy of the Lord. Sing it, I'm trading my sickness. I'm trading my sickness. Yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord, amen. Oh, sing, I'm trading, here we go. I'm trading my sorrows, I'm trading my shame. Jewel Magoon, I have the awesome honor of being the, oh, you guys can sit down for a second. <laughs> you guys cannot sit down. Um, I have the awesome um, privilege of um, directing Shrek right now, and um, as you all can see from the many pictures of Lauren, she loved to perform. I believe she was in 17 Spotlight, formerly CYT shows. Thank you, Fireman, for coming to those, by the way. I appreciate that. <laughs> we all do. Um, this is the cast of Shrek. We represent a small um, group of people who have performed with Lauren. Um, I am just one of many directors who have had a chance to work with her, and it was an honor. And uh, losing Lauren in the midst of preparing for a show was quite the blow. Um, she was a bright spot in our cast. And Chris put it best when she texted me, and she said, what could have derailed this show, God denied. And by his grace alone, we open a week from Thursday. She wanted me to tell you that, too. <laughs> <laughs> That's not me plugging the show, I promise. But it really is a miracle that we have been able to um, keep 
keep it going. We've prayed together, we've grieved together, and now we're healing together. And I say we, meaning the entire Spotlight community. Um, so we're very, very thankful for that. Um, the Leones asked us to sing a song from Shrek. And for those of you who know the show, I was like, well, there's not really a lot of appropriate songs. <laughs> um, but this one is very appropriate. It's, um, I'm a believer, but I want to clarify something. The lyrics are, I saw her face, now I'm a believer. And the truth is, because we share the faith in Christ that Lauren did, because we are believers, we will see her face again, no doubt in our minds. So I present Shrek Cass. Do this, guys. What a gift it is that we can, with all sincerity, in all honesty, celebrate life. Because with full assurance, even though we know Lauren's time on this side of heaven is done, we know that she is just rocking it out with Jesus, <laughs> right? following our time together, there is a reception, and you may be curious about the interesting combination of food you will see, and these are the foods that Lauren loved, the foods that she enjoyed. So as you um, partake together, share memories, laugh hard, but I would challenge you also to think about one thing, how are you living? How are you living? Today we've heard a lot about a God who promises eternal life. And Lauren lived that life and gave her life over to God. And because of that, everything you see today is the fruit of that. So how are you living? May today be an encouragement for you to go out and live the life that God has for you. In a moment, um, after we finish, 
I'll ask you to stay seated so that the family can be escorted out. But with that said, let's take a moment and close today in prayer. Lord Jesus, we thank you that uh, in a time that is tough for us, that what you offer us is life and life to the fullest. So Lord, I pray for the Leones in these coming days that in moments that are hard, that you would continue to be their sustainer, that you would continue to bring them life. And God, all of us offer to you our hands and our lives and say, use us to support them and encourage them and walk this path with them. Lord, I pray that today, the celebration that we have, that it wouldn't just be for the purpose of celebration, God, but as we asked in the beginning, that you would allow us to see you working in our lives every day. And from that place, God, may we be transformed. May we live life more fully. Lord, it is with gratitude for Lauren's life that we gather. And again, God, change us for your glory. Lord, we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. So as you go from this place, go with laughter, go with love, go with hugs. Be challenged. And tomorrow live life more fully than you live today. Go in peace. Amen.